Welcome to the Unit 7 review. Let's go ahead and look at some of the problems that you might face on the upcoming quiz or test, I guess. So, in the first set, we're just going to be drawing a graph for each inequality. So, what I want you to do, like on this one here, it says x is less than or equal to negative 4. The so less than or equal to means it's a closed circle. And then we need the numbers that are smaller, they live this way. So we're shading this direction on the line. Okay. A couple things to make sure that you're getting correct and complete is a thorough shading and finish the arrow off as well. Don't make me guess on which way you're shading by just simply drawing over the line. Okay, that will that will not receive credit. In the next four, you're going to be writing an inequality for each graph. So Really all you have to do is look at the picture. Let's look at number 7. So negative 1 is the point in question. So I just say, well, we're dealing with negative 1. And x is going to be something related to negative 1. Well, it's an open circle, so that means there's not going to be a line under the symbol. And we're looking at numbers bigger than greater than, sorry, bigger than negative 1. So we're looking at greater than negative 1. Okay, not too bad. In the next section, we're, we're going to be um, solving each inequality and graphing the solutions. Okay, I don't want to take all the easy ones away from you, so I'm going to go ahead and look at number 11 first. And a lot of this is just like solving equations. One thing that you want to remember is if you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to flip the inequality. Okay, so I'm going to start off with number 11. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 6 on both sides. I don't need to know what that is, 108 divided by 6, that's going to be 18. So since it's not a negative, I don't have to worry about flipping the sign. And I'm left with negative 4 plus r. So here I want to add 4 to both sides. And those go away and I get 22 is less than r. I can rewrite that as r is greater than 22 because a lot of people think that that's easier to read especially when you need to graph it uh, but when I look at my number line there's nothing on here all right it does say in the direction scale your number line to what is needed and that's usually kind of nice so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just put the number in question right in the middle and maybe tell a couple numbers that are on either side so numbers bigger than 22 like 23 and 24 and then down here is 21 and 20. So for numbers that are bigger than 22, though, I want an open circle and shade to the right. Finish off the arrow, make it bigger. That's a good answer right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn the page and look at the next set of problems. Most of those are pretty manageable. Okay. Um, and we've worked a lot with them, so you should be pretty well versed in solving inequalities. Okay, let's go ahead and look at absolute value equations. Now remember, once we get the absolute value by itself, we're going to have two different answers, uh, at, at least if we run into the case where the absolute value is a positive. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the last one here. I'm going to take number 18. I'm doing your favor, see? I want to start off as far away from the absolute value as I can. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides. So those cancel. And I'll have 8 times the absolute value of n over 3 equals 14 minus 6 is 8. So now I want to divide by 8 on both sides. Oh, that's kind of neat. We get n absolute value of n over 3 equals 1. So then remember from here you want to split it up into two equations. So n over 3 equals 1, or n over 3 equals negative 1. Okay? Now from there, just solve each equation. Multiply by 3 on both sides. Multiply by 3 on both sides there. I'll go ahead and do both, both equations at once. So n equals 3, or n equals negative 3. Those are my two answers. Okay. Make sure you're boxing or circling your answers 
so that I don't have to look all around the place just to find your answer. Okay. I am interested in seeing the work that you go through, but I do want to know that the answer is right first. Okay. Let's look at some of these uh, absolute value inequalities. Okay. Now they're a little bit different. Remember, we either get the and or we get the or. And the basics of it is if the uh, if the inequality symbol is pointing at the the absolute value, it's going to be an and. In the other case, we get an or. So I'm going to go ahead and do number 20. So for number 20, I want to start off by subtracting 4. And we get absolute value of x plus 1 is less than or equal to. That's going to end up being 10. So I know that x plus 1 is less than or equal to 10. And x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 10. Okay, those are the two things that it splits up into. So then we subtract 1 from both sides and x is less than or equal to 9 and when we subtract 1 on that one x is greater than or equal to negative 11. So we need something negative 11 and it's going to be a closed circle there. Let's call that right there. And so each one of these is a couple points. So that'll be 9 right there. And so I need less than 9 and greater than 11. And just shade where they overlap. These ones overlap in between the two points. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to leave the rest of those ones to you. Uh, now we're going to look at our linear inequalities. If you remember for linear inequalities, we want to go through our step-by-step -step process of uh, find the, sorry, figure out is it solid or dashed. That's depending on the symbol. Okay, I'm going to do number 24. So solid or dashed, that one would be dashed. Hold on. And sorry for that interruption. All right, so it's a dashed line. We start with the y-intercept. And we use the slope of down 2 over 1. And if I can find it, now I want to graph my line. So I'll throw my ruler on there and give that a dashed line. That's why I figured out that it was dashed first. So I don't make it solid and then try to say, oh, I messed up. Not that that's a total bad thing. A lot of people mess up. It's okay. You've probably seen me mess up once or twice already. And then what I want to do is test a point. And when I can, I want to test 0, 0. And that just means that 0, 0 isn't on the line. If it's not on the line, okay, it's not. It's right here. That means that I can test it. So is 0 less than negative 2 times 0 plus 1? Is 0 less than 1? Yes, it is. Okay, so since that point is true, we're shading all over here. Shading on that side of the line. And that's kind of hard to see. I'll try to make it a little darker for us. And I'm not giving extra points for coloring ability. All I'm asking is that you give more of an effort. Um, or give as much of an effort as me to show where your answer is. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn the page. The rest of those are just going to be on you. Okay. That's... uh five more graphing linear inequalities but let's go ahead and look at and talk through the application problems okay so down here on number one I, I know that the uh, I want I want to find all possible values for X and so when I'm doing that I know that I have an area greater than 72 well if you remember area equals length times width because we're dealing with a rectangle so I'm saying that length times width should be greater than 72. Okay. Now if you just go ahead and multiply that length and width together and then solve for your variable x, you'll know what x has to be in order for the area to be bigger than 72. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at number two. 
So the Duggar family, I don't know if you guys watch any TV, but that's the uh, 19 Kids and Counting or however many. I don't know how many they have anymore. But they uh, currently consist of 23 people. That's including the adults. Their family increases by 1.5 uh, people per year on average. So they want to have no less than 50 people in their family. Write and solve right solve and graph an inequality that models this situation. So I would say <coughs> you're going to have, it's kind of a slope, uh, slope intercept type of problem, but you want 50, the total number. They want no less than 50 people. Well, what does no less than mean? It means greater than. So what they want is greater than or equal to all right and so you want to start with the uh, people per year and so you're going to take that and multiply it by the number of years that's probably going to be a variable and then add that to the current people I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but just how many people they currently have in their uh, in their family. So what this is actually going to figure out is that you're going to be figuring out the number of years that they need to uh, have kids in order to make it to their 50. Okay, it's going to tell you in how many years will they do that. Kind of a neat problem, but make sure you graph that as well. So you're going to have to draw your own graph. Go ahead and turn the page. So I love pizza with a lot of toppings, okay? And I have $18.50 to spend on pizza. For a build-your-own pizza, it costs $14 with an additional $0.75 cents for each topping. So this is the kind of kind of the same problem, and you want to write and solve the inequality to find out what the maximum toppings I can have. So you're going to go with um, price per topping. So price per topping, your variable will be number of toppings. And we're going to add that to the uh, base cost. Okay, just how much the pizza costs. And I'm going to keep going a little bit here, but that obviously, that whole price has to be less than my 1850 but it can also be equal to 18.50. Okay, so you're just going to want to write that and solve that because you have all the things that you need to need to figure that out. So the next one, in boxing, cruiserweight division is centered at 183 pounds. The boxer's weight can be as much as seven pounds more or less than the uh, 183. Write an absolute value inequality for this weight requirement. All right. So what we're looking at is 183 is at the middle, and I need you to find a way to say that it can be as low as or as high as whatever those numbers are. Okay, so I would say that the maximum is 190, and the minimum that the boxer can be would be, uh, what's that, that's going to be 176, sorry, not 196, 176. So you need to find a way to say, and it's going to be using absolute value, but you need to find a way to say uh, X can be in between those, okay, and actually including those. But it will be an absolute value inequality. So if you have any questions on that, make sure you come and talk to me. All right, let's look at the uh, last three problems, and we'll get out of here. So when a firework bursts, the color of the stars are de determined by chemical compounds in the firework. The wavelengths for different colors are, are in the spectrum are shown, and so that's what this is over here that shows all the different colors. Uh, a firework star contains strontium. Okay, when it's burned, it emits light at wavelengths seen or given by that. What color would the star be? And really, all you have to do is solve that inequality. Okay, solve that absolute value inequality. And it's going to be a range of numbers, but it's going to fit somewhere into here. 
and that goes the same for each one of these okay so good luck on that if you have any questions feel free to ask I just don't want to broadcast them to everybody I want you to give it a shot first okay so good luck on the test that's coming up talk to you later